data points to pull together before we uh, begin uh, our conversation with uh, Julio Rivera. Uh, the first is Mark Condit, the uh, terrorist down in Austin, Texas. Uh, white, he says, uh, I enjoy cycling, tennis, reading, listening to music. I view myself as a conservative. Uh, and he wrote a great uh, piece uh, uh, for when he was in school titled An Argument for the Death Penalty. And uh, so he was a big, a good conservative, you know, a big fan of the death penalty, wants to do away with free, what, quote, free abortions. Uh, another one of the pieces he wrote, Why Gay Marriage Should Be Illegal. Uh, another one, We Should Do Away with the Sex Re Offender Registry. Um, <coughs> interesting stuff. But uh, Donald Trump has come out and said that he wants to kill drug pushers. And so I raise this simple question of all the drugs that you can use, uh, if you use the stimulants, including cocaine, they have therapeutic value. There's medical value. There's, there's an actual reason to use many of those drugs. And typically when people are abusing them, they're, they're trying to get toward that medical value. Uh, alcohol has uh, arguably a medical value. Caffeine has a medical value. But nicotine has none. There's no upside to nicotine. And when used as directed, cigarettes kill a half a million Americans a year. So Julio Rivera, editorial director of Reactionary Times, columnist with Newsmax, right-wing news and politics, revolutionarytimes.com is the website. Oh, yeah, it's Julio is the Twitter handle. Julio, welcome back. And uh, why, why uh, would you be in favor of the death penalty for somebody selling marijuana but not in favor of the death penalty for somebody selling tobacco when nobody's ever died from marijuana, but a uh, half million Americans every year die of tobacco. Okay, you're misrepresenting. First of all, Donald Trump is not trying to execute drug pushers. What he's trying to, what you're saying is a death penalty for the masterminds, the kingpins, you know, like the, the, the Mexican drug lord types or people who are operating at that level in our country. He's not talking about, you know, somebody selling nickel bags, uh, Tom. He's talking about, you know, people that are pushing kilos of, you know, heroin into our country. And listen, I spoke, and this is a very serious thing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up a story here. I had the opportunity to interview Eric Bowling. Uh, Eric Bowling, his son, unfortunately, uh, died when he took a Xanax pill that was laced with fentanyl. You know, these are the types of drugs that are killing people in our country. Just a small, tiny, microscopic amount of this Chinese fentanyl is all it takes to kill somebody. So if you have somebody who's pushing bricks of it, I'm talking about kilos, you know, uh, in the tens, in the hundreds of kilos. One, one kilo itself, if you broke it up into the amount of, uh, you know, dosage that it would take to kill people, one kilo could probably kill about 15,000 people. One kilo of that type of deadly fentanyl. So, yes, if people are handling, you know, uh, large amounts of something so dangerous, yes, the death penalty does become an option for people like that. And I think Donald Trump is sending the correct message. Right. So the so fentanyl-associated uh, opiate overdoses account for, what, around 30, 15 to 30,000 deaths in the last year. We had 60,000 overdose deaths, and, and I think fentanyl was involved in about half of them. Um, yes. So, uh, you know, I get that, you know, big quantities. And of course, I'm, I'm assuming you'd also want to go to China to find the labs that are making this stuff that are apparently approved of by course, the Chinese yeah, government. International, international and, effort would be important. Right. And you'd want you'd want the death penalty for uh, President Xi or something like that. But but what about the tobacco? Is, so are, are you arguing that the tobacco industry executives, the ones who made the conscious decision to lie to Americans for for 50 years about the about the how deadly and addictive nicotine is it's five times more addictive than heroin it's more, it's it's as deadly as fentanyl if you put pure if you put one drop of pure nicotine on your skin you will die we use it as a pesticide in fact the neonicotinoids the the weakened nicotine is seems to be what's killing the bees so are you calling for the death penalty for the tobacco executives or just the CEOs or the stockholders well, listen, uh, Tom. I mean, tobacco is a different, uh, a different uh, case. Tobacco is a drug, Julio. It, it is, of course. It's obviously it's a drug as well, and it, and it actually accounts for probably more death than you know uh, all the illegal drugs combined when you consider yes. the the massive five hundred thousand a year. Do die from tobacco. A conscious decision. 
I understand, but people make the conscious decision to go ahead and smoke, just like they make the conscious decision in a lot of cases to do drugs. But the We're not talking about users, though, Julio. We agree on that. We're talking that about the big-time dealers, and the big-time dealers here are the tobacco industry exec executives, seven of whom went to Congress, raised their right hand, and swore an oath on, you know, on, their, on their children's graves, uh, uh, metaphorically, that tobacco was not addictive. These guys lied through their teeth. There was no penalty. They all went on to become multimillionaires millionaires and billionaires shouldn't they be put to death um i don't I, they're no, killing I mean, americans it, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting question they are killing americans they're killing more americans okay. than the chinese fentanyl they kill more americans well, in one month than the chinese fentanyl hmm. kills in an entire year should they be put listen, to death I think the tobacco industry is horrible listen I, I i agree that it's terrible you know and then listen i I'm, I'm saying that to you as a 20-year smoker it's been trying desperately to quit smoking. Oh, I know how so, hard it is. I, you know, I, I quit, through, uh, you know, I smoked through my teenage years, and I quit when Louise got pregnant with our oldest child when I was 21. And it was, it was the yeah. hardest thing I've ever drawn, done. And I have, I have used er and abused pretty much every drug out there. And I'll tell you, <laughs> kicking nicotine was harder than anything else. You know, it's just, uh, I, so, so death penalty for tobacco CEOs? No, I mean, that's, that's a little ridiculous, Tom. I mean, we're talking Why is it about ridiculous? violence. There's violence and there's sudden death that's associated with a lot of these drugs. You know, you get a bad batch of heroin, a bad batch of cocaine, a bad batch of fentanyl. You know, there's people that die immediately. We've seen if a two-year-old eats about, a pack of cigarettes, it, they die. It, what was that? If a two-year-old eats a pack of cigarettes, they die. Nicotine's poisonous. Oh, if a two-year-old eats, you know, uh, a, a Tide Pod, they probably die, too. We're not, you want to go ahead and arrest people? That no, they make, die from know, a drug overdose. Now? They die from a drug overdose. I, it doesn't matter. They it's a poisonous, poisoning. addictive whatever. Listen, drug. They're, 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 this is, come on, you're, you're taking, you're kind of sensationalizing it. No, my point is that if you're going to, if you're going to talk about to killing... Trump is saying. My, we my, need to my, send a message to drug to, to major drug kingpins that if you're caught, if you're running a large operation, you know, and you're putting drugs in all these major cities and all these people are dying, that the death penalty is on the table. That's the central theme of this conversation. Well, one of the things that we know from, you know, decades and decades of really good research is that the death penalty does not discourage people from committing murder. Now, whether it would commit, whether it would just, because murder is typically an impulsive act, and when it's a planned exactly, act, people, yeah. people do not plan to get caught. But whether it would prevent people from selling drugs or not, I, I frankly don't know the answer. But we're talking about having the state, this big government that you're afraid of, the big government that runs the IRS and the post office, having that government that you are so that you so dislike decide which American citizens it is going to execute and which American citizens it is not going to execute. And apparently, well, if you are white and rich and run a tobacco company, the government's not going to execute you, even though you're killing at least 10 and maybe more times as many Americans every year as you know the the the, the poor Me the Mexican or the or the different. teenager in California who's decided that you know hey I can put myself through college by selling a few a few pills on the side. No, well, listen, pills. First of all, one pill can kill you, but the circumstances are different. You know, uh, tobacco is not illegal in this country. In fact, the big government state, you know, the big taxation state, loves cigarettes because you know the majority of the money that you spend when you buy a pack goes directly to the so government. should we so execute a those set of circumstances should we uh, execute those lawmakers who keep working to keep tobacco legal you know mike pence in 2000 his family's business was called tobacco road it was a chain of uh 7 11 type stores that ultimately went bankrupt because they were so apparently so poorly managed but you know their principal product was selling tobacco and in 2000 mike pence wrote a whole op-ed about how tobacco does not addictive not to worry doesn't doesn't won't kill you i mean you know uh, should we be having a conversation about the death penalty for politicians who support the tobacco industry? Are you calling for the for the uh, execution of our vice president? No, Tom? I'm not. I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm asking if there should be a conversation about mm -hmm. the death penalty for people who promote and sell tobacco. Well, as long as it's not illegal, no. You know, this is that's the difference part of it. But so shouldn't we then, then, then Julio, why don't why don't we do what Portugal did and and legalize all drugs? 
They actually dropped the addiction rate, they dropped their HIV rate, they dropped their hep C rate, when they simply decriminalized all drugs. Said, if you want to use drugs, you know, we'll have a that safe sounds, space for you like to do a libertarian it. argument, a little too libertarian for me. I mean, I think there are certain things that have to be off of the table. You can't allow for, especially in this climate where we've had the pharmaceutical industry working in concert with physicians to get people hooked on a lot of this stuff. So you want the death penalty for the pharmaceutical executives? <laughs> you just want to see people die. They're, they're selling know. a hell of a lot more drugs than the kids are. No, well, they, they are. They are. That's, that is a fair point, Tom. Okay. It definitely is. Julio, <laughs> always interesting talking with you. Thank you for dropping by today. Julio Rivera. Uh, Thank you so much, Tom. Yep, my pleasure. ReactionaryTimes.com. Oh, yeah, it's Julio is the Twitter handle. We'll be back.